Every day, I get several messages from Muslims saying something like this. David, you talk about Muhammad in front of your books because you're too scared to say these things in front of Zakir Naik. To you Muslims who think that Christian debaters are scared of Zakir Naik, I'd just like to ask, what color is the sky in your world? Because here on Planet Reality, Zakir Naik is a joke. Zakir Naik is a joke, and I'm not saying that because I disagree with him. I'm saying it because he's a complete joke. Let me give you three quick reasons. First, Zakir Naik portrays himself as a champion debater, but he's never faced one actual Christian debater in his entire career. Compare Naik with someone like Shabir Ali. Shabir Ali has debated William Lane Craig multiple times. He's debated James White multiple times. He's debated Jay Smith multiple times. He's debated Mike Lacona multiple times. He's debated Tony Costa multiple times. He's debated me multiple times. He's debated Sam Shimon and Samuel Green and Jonathan McClatchy and Nabil Qureshi. Shabir Ali obviously isn't scared to face experienced Christian debaters. Look up Zakir Naik's debates and you'll find that he's debated a handful of people you've never heard of. The only person Zakir Naik has ever debated that I've even heard of was William Campbell. And William Campbell wasn't a debater, he was a writer. Naik knew he wasn't a debater, that's why he agreed to debate him. Naik only agrees to face people who either have no debate experience or know nothing about Islam. Those of us who debate regularly and who deal with Islam regularly, Naik won't come near us. And we've been challenging him for years. Here's a debate challenge we sent him nearly eight years ago. I've challenged him to debate. James White has challenged him to debate. Sam Shamoon has challenged him to debate. Nabil Qureshi has challenged him to debate. And do you know what he says when we challenge him to debate? He says, you have to guarantee that you will show up to the debate with 10,000 people. Now, that's a strange demand. If you look at Zakir Naik's other debates with Christians, they didn't have to bring 10,000 people to the debate. In the two Zakir Naik debates I've clicked on, there were only a couple hundred people in the audience. Why did Zakir Naik debate them? I was recently watching one of Naik's Q&A sessions, and a Christian woman was at the mic. And Zakir Naik said that if she wanted to debate, they could set up a debate. Ask your question in two or three sentences. I if it is more than two or three sentences, yes. it becomes a lecture. What? If you want to have a lecture, yes. sure, if you want to have a debate also, we can arrange. Can you? Okay. You can come to Bombay. Right. No, it's not Bombay. I'm in the Gambia. Why was Zakir Naik trying to set up a debate with a random woman who stepped up to a mic at a Q&A session? By the way, right after he challenged her to debate, he changed his mind and said that he refuses to debate women. Then he said that he would be happy to debate a religious scholar, but once again, Naik didn't say anything about bringing 10,000 people to the debate. Why does Zakir Naik's 10,000 people rule only come into play when he's challenged by people who debate regularly? If some local pastor no one's ever heard of agrees to face him, suddenly Nike is ready to debate, even if the pastor shows up with no one. This is the age of the internet. Millions of people can watch a debate online. Zakir Naik could have a debate with a Christian in a hotel room and people around the world could watch it. Why does he selectively apply his 10,000 people rule? Because he knows that in America, most Christians have no idea who he is, so they're not going to come out by the thousands to see him debate. He knows that Christian debaters aren't going to rent the Superdome to face him because we think he's a joke. So he made up a rule that he only applies to avoid actual debaters. Why? Because he's a complete, utter, total coward, and he knows that his arguments would be destroyed by any experienced Christian debater. And what do Muslims say when we point this out to them? Oh, Zakir Naik refuses to face you debaters because you're beneath him. Wait, all of the actual debaters are beneath him, but the people he's debated, most of whom no one's ever heard of, they were important enough for him to face? How would we know who's beneath Zakir Naik if he's never once stood on stage with an experienced debater? How would we know? Naik is like a guy who walks outside his house, punches someone in the face, and declares that he's the heavyweight boxing champion of the world without ever facing any actual boxers. It's pathetic. What's even more pathetic is that Nike's followers are so gullible, they think he's a serious debater. There are serious debaters in the world. Nike isn't one of them. Second, Zakir Nike's ministry pays people to convert to Islam. The Hindustan Times reports, 
The special branch of the Mumbai police claims that controversial Islamic preacher Zakir Naik and his non-profit Islamic Research Foundation have illegally converted around 800 people to Islam by paying them using funds received from abroad. The allegation, if proved, could spell more trouble for Naik, who is being investigated for his fiery speeches and alleged extremist links. Mumbai police found that Nike's organization paid converts 50,000 rupees, some of which came from Saudi Arabia. Members of the organization would then radicalize converts and convince them to join ISIS. For you Muslims who are thinking to yourself, no, Zakir Naik would never do such a thing, you should probably study the Quran and the life of your prophet because Muhammad himself paid people to convert to Islam. And one of the reasons you pay zakat is to pay people to convert to Islam. Surah 9, verse 60 of the Quran lists the various uses of zakat. One of the uses is to attract the hearts of those who have been inclined towards Islam. What does it mean to use zakat funds to attract people's hearts? Muhammad shows us exactly what it means. In Sahih Muslim, number 6022, Muslims win the Battle of Hunayn. And we read, On that day the Messenger of Allah gave Safwan bin Umayyah a hundred sheep, then another hundred, then another hundred. Ibn Shahab said, Sayyid bin al-Musayyab told me that Safwan said, By Allah, the Messenger of Allah gave me what he gave me, and he was the most hated of people to me. But he kept giving to me until he became the most beloved of people to me. This guy hated Muhammad, but Muhammad kept giving him sheep by the hundreds until Muhammad was his favorite person in the world. In Sahih al-Bukhari, 3344, Muhammad divides a piece of gold among four chiefs of a different tribe. We read, So the Quraysh and the Ansar became angry and said, He, i.e. the Prophet, gives to the chiefs of Najd and does not give to us. The Prophet said, I give to them so as to attract their hearts to Islam. He was giving them gold to attract their hearts to Islam. Nearly 14 centuries later, Zakir Naik is doing the same thing. Muslims should be proud of Naik for imitating his prophet by bribing people to convert when his arguments fail miserably. Third, a few years ago, when I was watching some of Zakir Naik's talks to get some video clips for some shows, I was impressed that so many Muslims showed up to hear him speak when the talks were in English. I know a few Christians from one of the areas he was speaking in, and I said to them, it's cool that wherever Zakir Naik goes, there are so many Muslims there who speak English. They said, oh, lots of the Muslims who show up don't speak English. I said, why do they show up? Just to be close to Nike? They said, no, the Muslim leaders bring them in to cheer. They tell the Muslims who don't speak English to cheer loudly whenever they hear other Muslims cheering. Now think about this. Zakir Naik's organization has to bring in Muslims who have no idea what he's saying to cheer for whatever he says. Why? because they understand that many Muslims, and even some non-Muslims, don't know enough about what he's saying to know if his arguments are good or bad. But if enough people are cheering for what he says, gullible audience members will assume that he must be right. So Nike's organization loads the audience with people who cheer for him no matter what he says, because the cheering has a psychological impact on gullible audience members. This is the Islamic version of a laugh track for a comedian who isn't funny. And let's face it, a laugh track would be much more appropriate for a Zakir Naik lecture than for a comedian. Putting all of this together, many Muslims regard Zakir Naik as their best debater and top apologist. Who is Zakir Naik? He's someone who pretends to be a champion debater even though he's a complete coward who instantly backs down from every single experienced Christian debater who challenges him. He's someone who pays people to convert to Islam just as his prophet paid people to convert to Islam. And he has to bring in cheerleaders to tell his fans when to cheer even though they have no clue what he's saying, all so he can trick ignorant, naive, easily manipulated audience members into thinking that he's presented a serious case for Islam. Zakir Naik is a joke. He's always been a joke. He'll always be a joke. If this is, as many Muslims claim, the best apologist Islam has to offer out of 1.6 billion Muslims in the world, what does this tell us about Islam? Of course, there's much more we could say about Zakir Naik. If you'd like to know more about why he backs down from debaters, click on this video by Nabil Qureshi, where Nabil examines just five minutes of a Zakir Naik lecture and finds 25 mistakes. You heard me correctly. Over a five-minute period, Zakir Naik averages one mistake every 12 seconds. 
Fortunately for Nike, he's speaking to people who don't know any better and who don't bother to question or challenge him. But they keep cheering anyway, along with all the Muslims who don't even know what he's saying. Welcome to Islam, the only religion that would want someone like Zakir Nike as its champion.